Coming to you live from my treadmill desk, I've got my near-infrared heat lamp on to keep stress levels low and energy high. In this presentation, which I call History of Red Light Therapy. Of course, with all my presentations, none of the information contained in this one is medical advice. If you have or think you have a medical condition, consult your physician immediately. This presentation is for entertainment purposes only. So let's get into it. Now, this is actually from my book, Red Light Therapy, Miracle Medicine. I'm going to be reading to you some of the history of red light therapy to give you a broader understanding of where it came from, who discovered it, and the like. Since the dawn of time, the medicinal properties of light have been recognized and utilized for healing. Ancient Egyptians constructed solariums fitted with colored glass to harness specific colors of the visible spectrum to heal disease. So if you're wondering where it came from, it was the Egyptians who first recognized, I don't know how, it's pretty brilliant, that if you color glass, it will essentially filter out all of the other wavelengths of the visible spectrum of light and give you just pure a pure form of red light which is 600 to 700 nanometer wavelength radiation but they weren't the only ones early use by the Greeks and Romans emphasized the thermal effects of light so here is on the screen now if you're watching the video a solarium this is a modern solarium not the Egyptian ones that they made to my knowledge nobody has a photo of that I'm assuming there's some kind of ruins or remnants left behind that indicates that they did make solariums but uh, just to give you an idea that's what one today's solarium looks like so essentially imagine those planes of glass colored red and then the light that shines in from the Sun would be all in the red visible end of the spectrum and if you're listening to the podcast, by the way, uh, you can check out all these slides and photos that we go through in this presentation by going to the show notes at endalldisease.com slash episode two. That's E-P-I-S-O-D-E -E and then the number two. In 1903, Niels Ryberg Finsen was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for successfully utilizing ultraviolet light for treating tuberculosis. Today, Finsen is recognized as the father of modern phototherapy. And on the screen, you have a photo of Finsen. And also two babies being treated with an ultraviolet arc light, which emits UV for treating rickets. So the children had rickets, which is caused by a vitamin D deficiency. And here they are with these alien looking goggles on getting treated using ultraviolet light. This photo is in black and white and it's from 1925. Speaking of rickets and UV and vitamin D, I've read reports recently that uh, a lot of children now are getting rickets because parents are lathering them with sunscreen. I always tell people, you know, if you're going to, like, personally, I don't use sunscreen because it's, the ones I've seen are loaded with toxins. I don't, I don't think it's worth it. I think, like, we know these things cause cancer, yet we're using it to try to prevent cancer, so it just, it doesn't make sense. <clears throat> One thing that we know, though, for sure, is that red light prevents and inhibits sunburn, so dosing with red light before you go into the sun will actually protect against that, so that's one way of naturally providing yourself with sunscreen but I always tell people if they are going to provide sunscreen and use that on themselves or their children I would say like at least stay in the sun for like 30 minutes before you put it on so make sure you get some of that with what's important before blocking it all out you know so that would be some good advice to all the parents out there whose children are developing rickets because they're overusing sunscreen this here is actually a brochure I found it's from the early 1900s not sure if there's an exact date on there but on the front it says enjoy the Sun indoors with the home Sun so it's a British made product called the Vitan ultraviolet home unit and it's essentially 
an ultraviolet incandescent light bath box. So it has an uh, incandescent bulb. You can actually call it a mercury vapor lamp, which emits light in the ultraviolet spectrum, which will of course give you your vitamin D. Interesting. There's a lot. There's a lot of people like athletes at the bottom posing and smiling away, a mother and son or daughter receiving the light, and a woman sitting there with the light on her back. So very interesting that that was marketed and made for home use and probably pretty common. And then today we have nothing of the sort. Dr. Ray Pete has said that he uses a mercury vapor lamp himself to get his vitamin D. He's from Oregon. And I think he spends a lot of time in Mexico though as well at altitude. But as you know in Oregon the sun doesn't shine very much, especially in winter. So that's the way he uses or he gets his vitamin D. You can also supplement with it of course, but anyway, a mercury vapor lamp, those things still do exist. I've actually tried one myself. If you go to a pet store, they have these mercury vapor lamps available, usually for lizards. So I experimented with that a little bit, and I gotta tell you, it's not pleasant. Like if you're looking at this video right now and these photos of this brochure, everyone in front of the light is like smiling and enjoying it. It looks so relaxing, but really it's not. When you're out in the sun and you feel like a slight tingle on your skin, like that almost like pain feeling that you're burning, that's the ultraviolet portion of the spectrum. Red light, conversely, is very relaxing. If you do like a 30 minute treatment or 40, most times I fall asleep when I do that. Although it may look incredibly relaxing. Uh, ultraviolet mercury vapor lamps are not very comfortable to be in front of and you gotta make sure you shield your eyes from it too. Red light on the other hand, you don't have to and it's very comfortable. Although we do need vitamin D so some people may find that the good outweighs the bad. But personally, I don't like using mercury vapor lamps. I just use red light and I supplement vitamin D since I am from Canada. I would imagine unless people supplement or eat a ton of liver and eggs, which I try to do, but even still, I think supplementing in some sort, whether it from an electric light bath such as this or supplemental vitamin D, which is incredibly cheap, is probably essential. Anyways, moving on here. In 1910, American medical doctor John Harvey Kellogg published a book called Light Therapeutics. John Harvey Kellogg, yes, that's the multinational processed food producing man as well, who started Kellogg, the man who brings you your raisin bran and all sorts of other processed foods. It's the same guy, very interesting. So Mr. Raisin Bran, the guy who developed Kellogg's, is very interested in light ther therapy and therapeutics. So he wrote a book in 1910 which documented his experiences healing people using incandescent light bulbs and arc lights. Light therapy is effective for treating diabetes, obesity, chronic fatigue, insomnia, baldness, cachexia, and many other health problems, wrote Dr. Kellogg in his book. In 1904, two more influential volumes on light therapy were published. Oh, excuse me, before we get to that, I have two photos here. Two really old photos from the early 1900s of the incandescent electric light bath. So as you can see, there's a unit on the wall with a whole bunch of incandescent mercury vapor lamps and a woman sitting in front receiving treatment, getting her vitamin D indoors. And on the bottom, you have a nurse with her cute little nursing hat and a woman laying on the table she has a lamp as well on her back, so she's getting treated as well for vitamin D deficiency and receiving light therapy. Very interesting. Both black and white photos. And moving on. <clears throat> In 1904, two more influential volumes on light therapy were published. Light Energy, Its Physics, Physiological Action and Therapeutic Applications by Margaret Cleves and Elements of General Radiotherapy for Practitioners by Leopold Frund. All three books mentioned above can be found for free online. And the reason why I mention them is because this shows that interest in red light and light therapy at the turn of the 20th century was great. There was a lot of people interested in it and a lot of people using it for health. 
And all of a sudden, in the decades that followed, interest in the medicinal effects of light faded and was replaced by modern medical drug and surgical based treatments. That is, until the invention of the laser. For those of you that don't know, laser is actually an acronym which stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission Radiation. The laser was invented in 1960 by American physicist Theod excuse me, Theodore H. Maiman, but it wasn't until 1967 when the Hungarian physician and surgeon Andre Mester discovered that laser had significant therapeutic value. The Ruby laser was the first laser device ever built. On the screen now, you see the ruby laser on the left, it's pumping cavity disassembled. And on the right is the ruby laser pumping cavity assembled. So that is your very first laser device ever built. Working at Semmelweis University in Budapest, Hungary, Dr. Mester accidentally discovered that low level ruby laser light could regrow hair in mice. During an experiment in which he was attempting to replicate a previous study that found red laser light could shrink tumors in mice, Mester noticed that hair grew back more quickly on the treated mice than on the untreated mice. Dr. Mester went on to discover that laser light could also accelerate the healing process in mice. Following this discovery, he founded the Laser Research Center at the Semmelweis Medical University in Budapest in 1974, where he worked for the remainder of his life. Dr. Andre Mester's son, Adam Mester, was reported in an article by New Scientist in 1987, some 20 years after his father's discovery, to have been using lasers to treat otherwise incurable ulcers. He takes patients referred by other specialists who can do no more for them, the article reads. Of the 1,300 treated so far, he has achieved complete healing in 80% and partial healing in 15%. So people have ulcers, they go to their doctor and specialist, and they tell them that there's nothing they can do. And all of a sudden they go see Dr. Adam Mester, 1,300 people treated, and 80% were completely healed from the use of light. Good old ruby laser. Interestingly, due to a lack of understanding of how lasers imparted their beneficial effects, Many scientists and physicians at the time had attributed it to magic, but now we know today that it's not magic. We know exactly how it works. In North America, red light research didn't begin to take hold until around the year 2000. Since then, publishing activity has grown almost exponentially, particularly in more recent years. A quick search on PubMed of the various terms describing light therapy renders over 50,000 published scientific and clinical studies. I made this list in January 2018, so indeed it's probably a bit higher now. But as of then, we are at over 50,000 studies with zero reported side effects. So if you don't know, PubMed is the U.S. National Library of Medicine. It's where most, not all, but most studies are arranged. It's almost like a, a search engine for scientific studies. I've definitely found studies that weren't there, but the vast majority are, so it's a good resource. So these are other names for it, obviously. Phototherapy, so almost 38,000 studies. Photobiomodulation, 510 studies. Photostimulation, over 1,000 studies. LLLT, which stands for Low-Level Laser Therapy, over 5,000 studies. Low-Level Laser Therapy, written in full, almost 6,000 studies. And Near-Infrared Light, over 8,000 studies, almost 8,500. Dating way back to the days of the ancient Egyptians, therapeutic use of red light was first discovered using solariums, where they would filter out other wavelengths just to get the pure red light from the sun by using tinted and colored glass. Small units using ultraviolet light, which is not red light, but it's a different end of the spectrum. So you could call it light therapy as well. Uh, had value and it was commonly used in the home and all of a sudden this disappeared and it wasn't until the 60s when the laser was invented and so about seven years later that it was discovered that red light in and of itself from the laser had therapeutic value it wasn't even until 
2000 that the research exploded in the, the West. Now we have a lot of research out there documenting the beneficial effects of light as well as its safety profile. Over 50,000 studies which indicate that it can assist in healing people of literally dozens of diseases and conditions and symptoms with zero reported side effects. Zero for 50,000 plus studies is not too bad at all. If you like my work and like to support it, I've got three books out there that you can purchase. Links are below in the description. And also I have red and near-infrared light therapy devices custom on my online store if you want to try out the therapy for yourself. And if you just like to donate, there's also a link in the description as well. Links to all my books and red light therapy devices can also be found at the show notes for this episode at endalldisease.com slash episode two. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and God bless. And we will see you in the next episode. Actually, you'll see me.